Louder, Charlie. Charlie, you keep on getting off over his head like that, you're going to end up spoiling him. <laughs> Maybe we'll on the phone until tomorrow. Chico, unsaddle him and put him up, will you? Well, yes, I Think you'll be up to it tomorrow? Huh? <laughs> you take it easy, Charlie. Liniment's just inside the tack room. Oh, it's going to take some doing to break that animal. There's a beauty, though. He's going to make a fine cut, North. Perdóname. Who do I talk to about the job? I do the hire on Nick Barclay. My name is Juan Molina, senor. Glad to know you. What kind of work do you do? Mostly I am a wrangler. Mm -hmm. Can you break horses? A little, senor. Well, we got about 30 of them. We got to iron out. How about that one over there? Like to show me what you can do? See? Hank, have Chico saddle up that horse again. No saddle, please. What? Just a hackamore. Chico! Let this man have a try at that horse. And no saddle, just a hackamore. He's riding him. He's all yours, amigo. Where to swear to? Quiet. Quiet. Shh. I'm your friend. Trying to break them Indian style. Looks like. Heard about it, never seen it done. How are you now? My beautiful friend, Si, senorita. Once, a long time ago. But that man, he is dead now. Or so people say. I wish you'd been here earlier. I've never seen anything like it. What? Breaking a horse Indian style. Oh. Well, now, where'd you ever learn to bust a bronc like that? 
from an uncle who's learning from the Comanches, senor. Ah. Oh, mother. Mother, this is Juan Molino. This is my mother, Miss Bartley. Oh. How do you do, Mr. Molino? I am honored, senora. And my sister, Audra. How do you do? You were wonderful with the horse. Uh, gracias, senorita. Muchas gracias. You really miss something, senora. So I heard. Perhaps you'll give me an opportunity to see you at work some other time. It will be my privilege, senora. If you want the job, you got it. It pays 40 in beans. You can start right now, if you like. Gracias, senora. But first, uh, I must pick up some gear I left in Stockton. Well, you can start as soon as you get back. How's that? Muchas gracias. De nada. Mucho gusto, senora. Take good care of this horse, amigo. Muy bien. La vista, señorita. Benito, I'm going to take this to the dressmaker. I'll meet you back here. Muy bien, señorita. Excuse me, honey. We're shopping, huh? Now, that ain't very polite. Let's go. I was about thanking me by having a drink with my friend. <laughs> he said, let's go. We could have a real good time. The lady alone, senores. Let her go. You'd better mind your own business. I am going to tell you only once more. Let me. Forgetting something, senores. Apologize to the senorita. Apologize, senores. Sorry, miss. Benito, would you please take this to the dressmakers for me? Seguro, come on home. Thank you. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come along. I'm very happy I was here, senorita. Apparently, you're as good with the gun as you are with horses. I much prefer horses, senorita. Now that you are all right, I will... I'd like to ask a favor of you. Of course, senorita. Anything. I have a horse. His name is Ladino. He's a... Ladino? The one who went wild? Yes. Well, he was foaled on our ranch, but he got away and ran with a herd of wild horses until my brothers caught him. His bloodline goes back to a horse named Steel Dust. Steel Dust? Well, you've heard of him? Anyone who... I've heard anything about horses. I've heard of steel dust, senorita. Well, I want to make Ladino even more famous than steel dust. We could start by entering him at the state fair. We? Oui? Well, that's the favor I was going to ask you. Could you help me break and train him? Of course, senorita. It's a great honor. But perhaps your brothers... It's all right with my brothers. Well, well when do we start? Tomorrow. Muy bien. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, senorita. Some of that time for me, huh? Have a good time, boys. Ay, 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 Chihuahua! What the devil happened to you? You look pretty good, huh? Good, you look beautiful. Hey, you had a bath, too. No, <laughs> man, <maybe. laughs> Where do I sleep? Ahí, amigo. Hey, we heard about you stopping those two fellows from Balder and Miss Audra. Benita told us. They were drunk. Still, I would like to have seen it. Pow! <laughs> How about riding into town with us? No, gracias. I've done too much riding for one day. As soon as I take care of my horse, I go to sleep. Going to sleep? The guy that goes to bed on Saturday night? How do you figure that? I'll see you later. Take care of the girls for me. All of them. Did you see it? See what? That scar. The scar on the right cheek. Well, what about it? He had one, just like that. Who? And he could break in a horse, Indian style. And handle a gun, just like he was a part of himself. It's been 15 years. The man changes. But I know it's him. Who are you talking about? 
Joaquín. Joaquín. Joaquín Murieta. Stalking with the others. I came back. Well, then go to bed. I came back to talk to you. What about? You don't remember me. But I knew you in San Andreas. I worked in the cantina. The first time I saw you was right after those gringos had killed your wife. The night you swore that you would kill them, every man who had touched her. And when gringos hanged your brother, Elena Santos came to live with my sister. What are you talking about? You remember Elena. She loved your brother very much. Elena, she is still works in San Andreas in the cantina. And Look, old man, you've got me mixed up with somebody else. I've never been in San Andreas. And I've never been married and, and have no brothers. And I don't know anybody named Elena. You do not have to worry. The gringos, they will never suspect who you are. They want to believe Joaquin Murrieta is dead. Joaquin Murrieta? We have been waiting for you. Hundreds of us. We knew you would come back someday. Hombres from all over, ready to ride with you again. <laughs> What's the matter with you, huh? You had too much tequila, huh? Joaquin Murrieta is dead. No. He's been dead for many years. The gringos killed him. You are Joaquin. Listen to me, old man. You're wrong. I am not Joaquin. Do you understand? Do you? Put out the light. Gracias, señorita. See you in Latina. You were right, señorita. He's a beautiful animal. Watching him, I, I almost wish we didn't have to take his freedom from him. But then... Then? <laughs> but then I remembered he belongs to you, and what does a lucky horse like that have to complain about? <laughs> Senorita, uh, soon it'll be El Cinco de Mayo and, and the big fiesta to celebrate it. Will you be going? Probably. Oh. Well, then, perhaps I, I will see you there. And you will do me the honor of having a dance with me. Are you a good dancer? Uh, well, I, I don't like the both. But, uh... Well, maybe we could have more than one dance. Shall we get to work? Si, si. Enseguida. Look at you. Pete. Sorry. Well, he looks like he's been harnessed all of his life. Whose horse is that? I don't know. Maybe we better take a look. Oh, Pete. I found him like that. His horse must have thrown him. He's... Yeah. 
Well, we better uh, get the wagon, get him on back to town. A man works for us for five years and we know nothing about him. Here's something. Where do you suppose he's kept this after all these years? I remember talking to him once about Murrieta. To Benita and a lot of others. Murrieta was a hero, a sort of... Oh, sort of a Robin Hood avenging all the wrongs done to himself and his people. And it's a strange thing. Benita never believed it was Murrieta who was killed in Priest Valley. What do you think? I don't know. I... I never gave it enough thought to have an opinion. Well, I'll go up in the attic and see if I can find something to put these things in. Oh, uh, excuse me, senorita. Oh, Juan, you don't have to go. Mother and I are just going through Benito's things to see if we can find the name of someone to notify. We found this in his Bible. It seems as though Benito didn't believe Joaquin was ever killed. Benito was an old man, senorita. And things got mixed up in his head. Joaquin was struck down like an animal. And like an animal, I said, was cut off by the gringos and, and put in display like a trophy of the hunt. Horrible. Horrible? Why horrible, senorita? Joaquin was a thief and a killer. No matter that he stole and killed only after the gringos had attacked and murdered his wife. After all, why should Joaquin have had any feelings? He was just another greaser. Don't use that word. I am sorry. Nobody on this ranch is considered any better or worse than anyone else. Please, accept my apologies. Good evening, Fred. Evening, Victoria. Come in. I'm sorry to bother you this time of night, but there is something I would like to talk to you about. Of course. What is it? That's a telegram Benita sent this morning, addressed to a woman named Elena Santos over in San Andreas. Now, all it says is El Patrio is alive. El Patrio? The Patriot? Yeah. Mean anything to you? Well, if I remember correctly, that's what some of Murrieta's friends used to call him. Oh, surely you don't think Murrieta's still alive. Well, not exactly, but Elena Santos did know Joaquin. She was the girlfriend of Murrieta's brother, Claudio. Until I read this telegram, I had no reason to believe that Benito hadn't been killed in a fall from his horse. But now you do. Well, not, uh, not necessarily, but Doc Marar says he could have been killed by a blow from the butt of a rifle or something like that, so I just thought I ought to have a talk with the vaquero who found Benito's body. Juan Molina, why? Well... Victoria, suppose Molina really is Murrieta. He'd want to keep that a secret, wouldn't he? And you think Juan killed Benito because Benito found out who he was? It's possible, isn't it? Oh, now, Fred, aren't you reaching for something way out on the end of a limb? Nick, there are a lot of important people who don't believe that was really Murrieta that Captain Love and his rangers killed. But the state paid Captain Love and his rangers the reward. Wells Fargo refused to pay the reward it had posted, and so did most of the other banks. Now, oh, I would like to have a talk with Juan Molina. All right, come on. Hey, Molina, we could use some fresh money in this game. I gave up gambling a long time ago. Juan. Si, sí, senor. Will you step out here a minute, please? Juan Molina? It's Sheriff Madden. He wants to ask a few questions. What do you want to know? Name Elena Santos mean anything to you? Benito sent her a telegram telling her that Joaquin Murrieta is alive. So, what does that have to do with me, senores? You lived all your life in the galleys, huh? See. Si. What are you saying then? You think I'm Joaquin Murrieta? No, I'm not too sure. I know what the sheriff's saying, Juan. I want to know why Benito sent this telegram. Oh, Fred, Benito's an old man. He was imagining things. Maybe. Sheriff, do you. To all North Americanos, Joaquin Murrieta was a bandido and a murderer. And that is true. But, but 
why, senores. Huh? What made him what he was? His brother was lynched for a crime he did not commit. His wife was attacked and killed. And not by one man, but by 13 filthy, drunken gringos. Rosita was only 17, senores. And she was so, so beautiful. But not after those swines were through with her. And then they, they stomped and bit Joaquin and left him for dead. But he would not die. A bandido, a murderer. He was much more than that to me, senores. He was a man who fought back for himself, for, for Rosita, for his people. You flatter me if you think I am Joaquin. It is an honor to be mistaken for him. But that is what it is, senores. A mistake. I'm not working, Morieta. You're supposed to be riding fence today? Yeah. Forget it. I want you to pull the Mustangs out of Shadow Canyon. All right. Juan Molina will give you a hand. Molina? That's right. Something the matter? Yeah. Well? I know why the sheriff was out here last night, Nick. All the men do. Go on. Well, I ain't talking for nobody but myself. Well, you get to the point, Hank. The point is, I think you ought to get rid of him. Fire him? Yeah. What for? Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I thought something was funny about Molina right from the start. He stays to himself. He don't talk. He won't go to town. So what does that prove? Maybe nothing, maybe a lot. But if the sheriff thinks maybe he's Joaquin Marietta, that's good enough for me. Well, it's not good enough for me. And no one, you or anyone else, is going to tell me who I can hire and who I can fire. Now you get to work. I'm not going to work with Molina. And I'm not going to live in the same bunkhouse with him. I saw what Marietta did to some men once up in Spanish Flats. He went kill crazy just like that. And... Well, it wasn't very pretty, Nick. And the same thing could happen around here. That is, if he is Marietta. I've been with you a long time. But if that guy Molina stays, I go. Well, looks like I came by just in time to wish you adios. Now you get your gear and get out of here. bumping anyone else that feels the same way you do. You tell them to come by the house. I got their pay waiting for them, too. Buenos dias, señorita. Good morning, Juan. You're not going to ride Ladino this morning, señorita? No, I have some errands to do in town. I'd like you to drive me. Would you get the buggy, please? Bien. Senorita, perhaps it would be better if one of the other men would drive it to town. I asked you. But there is so much talk. I know all about the talk. Hank Mitchell has read most of it out of spite because Nick fired him. But people believe it. But then they're fools. You're not afraid of me, senorita. Do I have any reason to be? <laughs> no. And will you get the buggy, please? Muy bien. You going to town? Yes, I've asked Juan to drive me. Oh? Yes, I want to show the people in town that we don't believe the suspicion about him. Oh, it is all right, isn't it? You bet it's all right. Mm. Morning, Victoria. Sarah? Audra? Good morning. Miss Santos, this is Mrs. Barkley and her daughter, Audra. This is Elena Santos, the lady that Benito Flores sent the telegram to. Just got in on the stage from San Andres. What brings you to Stockton, Miss Santos? The sheriff. I sent her a letter, asked her to come over and take a look at that vaquero of yours. I trust that's all right with you? As a matter of fact, it is not all right with me, Sheriff. However, I can't speak for one. Audra, would you get him, please? I'm here, Senora. This is the man? <laughs> Well, 
well, Miss Hunt? No, this man is not Joaquin. Are you sure? Yes. Look at him again. I do not need to look at him again. I am sure he is not Murieta. A second ago, you weren't quite so sure. But I am now. Juan, would you get the buggy, please? Victoria, take my advice and get rid of that hombre. Ah. Hi. Mother, Juan isn't Marietta, I know that. But I had a feeling that woman was lying. So did I, Ota. So did I. Mm -hmm. Mustangs need breaking. Think maybe we can get to it tomorrow? Si, senor. Here you had another visit from the sheriff yesterday. You brought a woman called Elena Santos. Yeah, I know. Audra told me all about it. We'll be going down to Mexico in a few weeks to buy some cattle. Think maybe we can have those broncs ready for the remuda? Seguro, senor. Como no? We'll be trailing the herd back through your hometown. I always like to stop in the Gallus myself to see a friend of mine. The alcalde, you know. See. Si. Luciano Tejada. Yeah. Fine ranch he has down there. El Rancho Cañada de San Miguel. San Antonio. So now you started wondering about me too, eh, senor? No, I'm just checking. May I ask a question, senor? Go ahead. What if you knew that I was Joaquin Murrieta? And what if you knew that for 15 years, I had been drifting from one place to another, working as a vaquero, and not wanting anything except to live in peace. If you knew that, senor, what would you do? Would you turn me over to the sheriff? But why, senor? Why would it be so important for you to see me hanged after all these years? Are you telling me you're Marietta? No, senor. But now that you've started wondering about me, you won't stop. Oye, amigo. Dígame. There was a hombre here looking for you. Quien? I never saw him before. He left a note for you on your bunk. Gracias. De nada. It's not a game. I am looking into your future. What does it say? The cards see you riding at the head of a large band of caballeros. They see you and your men raiding the ranches of the gringos, stealing their cattle and their horses. They see you robbing their banks and their stagecoaches and their trains. The cards see Joaquin Murieta alive. Guards are wrong. You are here. I am Juan Molina. And that names mean nothing to the cards. They know the truth. The people know the truth. Go out to the bar. Look into the eyes of the young hombres. Walk the streets, Joaquin. See how the people stare. They know that Patrio is alive. Benito said it. 
and somebody hurt him and that made it true. You cannot change that. It is Otto. I don't believe in fate. Put your cards away, senorita. Joaquin is dead. Hasta luego, Joaquin. He will be back. You will ride with him. You and many more. Hold it. We've been waiting for you. He and my friend are going to take you somewhere and learn you some manner. I'll get out from that horse. Hey, Brandy? Yeah, you do. Last time we met, you talked pretty good. Yeah, and just in case them stories we've been hearing about you are true. We're going to drop your head off right in front of the sheriff's office. Now, get out! What do you want? Do you know why the sheriff's here? Yes. The man with him is lying, senorita. I would be hanged. I would be hanged unless you help me. How? Tell the sheriff I didn't kill the man. Tell him I... I couldn't have killed him. So it will be your word against that hombres. And you will be the one the sheriff will believe. I don't understand. How could I tell the sheriff that you... Senorita, you could tell him that after you came to your room tonight, you slipped out to meet me. Why don't you say that we were together until a few minutes ago? You're not serious. Senorita, please. No. My life is at stake. No. Why, senorita? Because the reputation of a fine Anglo lady like yourself is, is more important than the life of a mestizo like myself. I wouldn't tell such a story for anybody. Anybody! So tell your brother to, to stop wondering about me. I am walking. Coggins. Yeah. You know, my brothers and I, we've been looking all over town for you. I guess I just happened to be the lucky one. Funny thing happened last night. Well, we were out hunting all over the ranch for Molina or Marietta or whoever he is. He was right there in the house having a little talk with my sister. Oh, maybe you remember Audra. Audra says Molina claims he killed your friend in self-defense. Well, he's a liar. Keith, I don't want you breaking up the place. Now, Harry, this should cover all the damages. I'm warning you, mister. You better leave me alone. Gringo has admitted he lied. What interest is that to me? Well, I was hoping you'd know where Molina is. Why should I know? That hombre means nothing to me. Well, if you happen to see him, would you tell him he's in the clear? If I see him.
Joaquin. One of the Barclays, the one called Heat, was here looking for you. What did he want? He works with the sheriff. So do his brothers. He said he wants to be watching up front when they hang you. Everybody in Stockton is laughing at them, and they intend to make you pay for it. It is true. They want to see your head in a jar. Juan, they say you are Joaquin Murieta. How many men will ride with me tonight? Tonight? Against the Barclay Rancho. I tell you, for the last time, go back to Stockton. And I answer for the last time, que no. I want to pick out some pretty clothes from the wardrobes of the senora and senorita. No, you're staying here with the horses. The vaqueros were paid today. They will be in town. The Barclays have much wealth, and that is ours. But we leave the cattle, the horses, except for one, Ladino. And he is mine. I think she'll be all right for the night. Let's go back to the house. Melina, give up. Nick, behind you. Joaquin Murieta. He just... He just died, Mr. Santos. But he could have been Joaquin. Meaning he wasn't? I wanted him to be. And for a little while, he was. Even he believed it. Why was that so important to you? So he would help. So he would help me pay you gringos back for what you did to Claudio, the man I loved. Fifteen years is a long time to hate. It's also a long time for a woman to be without the man she loved. We 
killed him, Mother. All of us who doubted him. I know. And I could have saved him. Could you? I wonder, Audra. You said they had their medicine squaw with them. Well, they did have when I seen them. There and two more squaws. Must split up someplace. That loses us nearly $500 for her scalp alone. <laughs> Not if we go get her. Hutch? What? What'd you say these things before? Uh, some sort of celebration. Most keep away harm. Don't work so good, do they?
a trip? Simon? Well, now, who blazes you think it was? I ain't never seen you all spruced up like this. Uh huh? Look like you're going to a funeral. Oh, 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 ain't you the comical one, huh? Smells sober, too. Are you sure you ain't a mirage? Sam, why don't you just go about your business and don't be bothering us private citizens? <laughs> Oh, it's good to see you. Oh, thank you, too. It's been just about a year, I guess, huh? You look wonderful. Ah, oh, I feel fine. You too. I haven't, uh, haven't had a drink since you left. Hey, well, hardly. <laughs> I did have a few on, uh, I think, the 4th of July and uh, a couple other them international holidays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh, put no shade on the wagon. Well, it looks brand new. Well, I just got around doing it yesterday, but I remembered that you'd ask for one, you know. You fixed up a lot of things at the mission. Father Andre wrote and told me. He's very <laughs> grateful. Well, I just figured I'd keep an eye on things out there for you while you was away, you know. Uh, is this the stuff for the mission? Yes. Up, sir. Hey, see. <laughs> yeah, that thing is heavy. What are you, a in there? Yes. It must be lead loose. I didn't know better. I think you got a bunch of awful county Indians out there. Tell me about the hunting. Did you have a good season? Oh, tolerable. Miss Barkley. Tolerable. Hello? Actually, miserable, to be closer to the truth. I didn't have me but about two parties all year. Oh, I'm sorry, Simon. Now, I'm getting kind of sick and tired of that hunting and guiding business anyway. There you go. Traipsing around the country, up and down the hills, running after a bunch of mangy animals, shaking your boots out every morning, get the bugs and the lizards out of them. When did you start carrying all these rifles? Oh, well, why don't I just kind of have them around in case, you know? It's... Oh, well, well, sometimes when you get, you get a bunch of dudes coming in from the east, they want to go hunt or something, they, they come out here, they don't bring no guns, no nothing with them at the time. Okay. Okay, get it up for a moment. Hello, woman. Oh, it's always so peaceful here every year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Huh? What is it, Simon? Yakis. I can smell that stinking bear grease they use to keep the bugs off them. Yakis? Yeah. I've been coming across the border in droves ever since that Senor Diaz took over the Mexican government. Well, did you read about it in newspapers? Yes, but I didn't think any of them were in this area. That's why I brought them extra rifles. Ah! Hey, what I tell you? They must have took Bart Andre prisoner. Prisoner? Oh, by heaven's sake, Simon, they're nothing but young girls. Yachties is Yachties. They're dangerous. Even them little short ones and papooses. <laughs> oh, Simon. <laughs> I thought I heard the buckboard. Simon didn't tell me you were ill. Oh, I'm not. It's just a touch of lumbago. Such a pleasure to see you, my dear. Well, it's good to see you, too. Uh, Padre, what are them Yaki's doing out there? I was trying to keep that as a surprise. So I've been going over to their camp, tending the sick. Well, finally, they're coming here. All the chiefs. The chiefs? We're going to have a feast. The women are here to prepare it. But that's wonderful, Father. Wonderful? What's wonderful? I have brought the milk of the goat, Father. It will give you strength. That's very kind of you, my dear. Oh, Siataki, these are my good friends, Victoria Barclay and Simon Carter. Siataki is the tribe's medicine woman. Father Andre has told us often of his good friends. 
I will cool the milk. Padre, are you sure you know what you're doing? Huh? Bringing them Yaki chiefs here? And then on top of that, that, that Yaki medicine woman? Don't you know she's just like waving a, a lucky rabbit's foot in front of them hostiles? And another thing, anybody with half an eye can see the girl's been... You, pardon the expression, Miss Barkley, in a, in a family way. And if everything should happen no, to her... It's going to happen, Simon, now believe me. Come, Victoria, you've had a long trip. Let's have some tea. Ooh. Father. No, it's not here. Yeah. Let me sit here for a minute. Now, now, don't be alarmed, my dear. Now, we're going to take you to town so you can see the doctor. Simon, would you fix a place on the buckboard? There's too much to do. The Yaki chiefs will be here any moment now. Simon, I tell you, they're peaceful. Peaceful? Zazu, they're peaceful. That's why the Mexican government put a $200 a head bounty on every one of their scalps. No, the safest thing for you is to get you back on board that stage, Miss Bogley. You'd be a lot better off there. Now, come on, this is no place for a lady. You take my word. We'll get the padre to the doctor in town there, and then you head on back to your family. It... Now, I was looking forward to this visit, Miss Bogley. Really, I was. But I certainly ain't going to get no pleasure out of it, knowing that you might get your throat cut any minute. Now, come on. <laughs> Now he has a couple of broken ribs. He can't be moved for a few days. Well, anyway, it's a good thing you got him to see the doctor. One of those ribs, you know, they could punch a lung or something. That's true. Well, we'd better be getting back. Back? Back when? To the mission, of course. The mission? Now, Miss Barkley, you're not going to go back to him. You know them Yankees. Why not? Father Andre does. Now, believe me, Miss Barkley, I know what I'm talking about. I know them Yankees. Me, I went prospecting one time with an old miner friend of mine. He trusted them, too. We let a bunch of them share our campfire one night. As soon as we was better down, they jumped us. They tied me up tighter than a dick. And they spent the rest of the night peeling the skin off him alive. Yeah. Come the morning, it was going to be my turn, only I got lucky. I worked myself loose, and I got me out of there. Well, that's awful, son. But the situation is different now. Them Yankees have hated the white man for 200 years. Now, you think just you doctoring them for a few weeks is going to change all that? No. But keeping faith with them for a change might help. No, you got the same dang fool notions you had when I met you a year ago. You know what you're going to do, huh? You're going to get both of us killed. Oh, I don't think they'll kill us, Simon. But I certainly don't expect you to take the risk. You just drive me back to the mission. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure, come on. Drive you back there and leave you out there by yourself to maybe get your gizzard cut out or something like that, huh? Miss Barkley, how could I do a thing like that? Oh, maybe a year ago, I might have been able to do it. I don't... When I first met you, you know, I... Well, I, I really didn't like you too much. Well, uh, things are different, and... And I, I owe so much to you. Owe me? What do you mean? Well, when you first met me, I was kind of... <laughs> and sloppy. I, I... I didn't take too much interest in myself. You told me that, remember? And, and then I used to, I made pretty good, taking a couple of drinks. I would not that I couldn't have cut it out myself on my own if I wanted to, you know. It was just that you pestered me into, into quitting it before I... <laughs> All right, move on. Go on, get over there. I want to back out to the mission before you test me half to death. Come on, I'm against you. <laughs> On the tracks, three squaws. Head for that old mission I was telling you about. How far is it? A couple hours ride? Let's go. Howdy. Yeah, howdy. Hey, ain't you, uh... Simon Carter. That's my handle, yeah. Well, I met you down to the Pecos River last year. Oh, my big buffalo hunt. Yeah. <laughs> These here's my new hunting partner. This here's Mitchler. Likewise, I'm sure. And that there's Ruiz. Come up here. I thought of that, senor. See? 
Uh, well, we was just passing and uh, wanted to see if maybe you could spare some water. Yeah, help yourselves right over there. Uh, take care of it, will you, boy? Are you stopping here? Oh, it just happened out. You know, the Padre's all by himself alone out here. That lonesome for just one old man, ain't it? Yes, boy. You see the horses? Try to get a look inside. Come in. What, uh, what are you doing around these parts? We're going after that buffalo herd in Canyon Gap. 3,000 head. Biggest one sighted in years. You don't say. Gee, I'm surprised you don't know about it. We catch up with them, we're gonna bag us enough hides to make a couple of thousand apiece. Zazu. Sure sounds like the old days, don't it? Huh? He, he does, don't it? Hey, you ought to come along with it. We could use another gun. Well, I, I had to go into town and get my gear. Oh, we'll wait for you. Well, now, I don't know about that. What would the Padre be in second all? You know, maybe I ought to stick around it and bring him back from the doctor. Well, uh, can't somebody else do it for you? Ain't nobody else, except Mrs. Barkley. Oh? Well, that's too bad. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, heard there's some Indian squaws here selling Yaki Bluestone. My partners and me want to buy some. This is a medical mission. We don't sell anything. I'm sorry to bother you. a fine papoose board, will it not? Very fine. Perhaps it will carry a great medicine, Chief. One to keep my people safe. I hope so. See them? No. They gotta be in that mission somewhere. All set, Hutch. Well, we better be going. Still wish you'd come along with us. <laughs> the more hides, the bigger the split. Sure. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. We're gonna be traveling slow to keep the horses back. You know, following them water holes. If you change your mind, you can catch up with them. Nah, I just might do that. Good. <laughs> Mr. Hutch. We'll see. Oh, boy. Here. It's just water and up on the trail of a big buffalo herd. One of them was carrying a scalp pouch. That's a lot. Lots of hunters carry them. I got one myself. 
I saw him wet it down as if there were scalps in it. Scalps, land of Goshen, what a notion. You wet down a lot of things. You wet down bacon, hardtack, lots of things other than scalps. One of them came inside. He asked if there were any yakis here. Maybe he's just edgy about it. Oh, no, no, he be. wasn't edgy, Simon. I think he was trying to find out if Siataki and her women were here. Oh, well, what made you think a thing like that? Your woman's in or something? Well, he didn't see them, of course. Well, then but... what's there to worry about? They're gone, ain't they? That doesn't mean they won't come back. With the bounty on scalp so high... Miss Barkley, I told you they're buffalo hunters. I know one of them. I rode with them down the Pecos River country. Maybe, but I wish we could be sure. Look, I can't go poking my nose into somebody else's pouch just on account of your woman's intuition. I might get it shot off. Well, I think we ought to be ready for them just in case. You mean fought up? Oh, now, look here, Mrs. Barkley. Now, fortin' up is hard work. I ain't got Simon. the physical stamina. Simon. How many years has it been since you heard of Buffalo this far south? Now, you just love to pester me, don't you, huh? And you're gonna drive me right into exhaustion. Right downright into downright exhaustion, Miss Barkley. Mm -hmm. Figured the price of that stock didn't include delivery. Ah, come on, Nick. You're just not much of a horse trader. Now, Heath, you never figured out it either. Well, Castelogo's not that far away. It's still a bargain. Packed enough food for two days. By that time, you should be there. I sure hate to leave you, sis, with Jared and Sacramento, mother at the mission. It's gonna be kind of lonely around here. Wish you weren't going. We got to. Gotta pick up that stock. We'll be back as soon as we can. Say, why don't you go down to the mission with Mother? Then you two can come back together. That's a good idea. You can catch a train to Kearney and then pick up a stage there. Better than staying alone. Come on, there's room in the buckboard. But there's no telegraph office at Sand Hill. They won't know I'm coming. So what? Surprise them. I'll be ready in five minutes. That means 15. Shame shaking up good wine, but no good reason. Well, there'll be plenty of good reason if those men come back and rush us. Yeah, that'll be trouble. These barrels of wine get shot up. Well, I'd rather have them shot up than us. Simon, there are three of those men. I'm just trying to cut down the odds. Now, we'll take turns keeping watch. I'll see you at midnight. Hey, them squaws know we're standing watch. Oh, no, no, they're asleep. I didn't want to frighten them. <laughs> they try sneaking up on us. They're going to be in for a dandy surprise, huh? Oh. Old woman. Where do they start peeling our skin off? They must have got wise. They got that whole place locked up tighter than a drum. Told you Carter wouldn't believe that buffalo story. I think we should go get this squash. It does not make no difference. He's a dead shot. Oh, without cover, he'd cut us down like sheep. That Yaki tribe finds them dead chiefs. We'll have more than Carter to worry about. They'll be swarming all over here. Killing every white man in sight. We'll wait. Sooner or later, he'll leave to check out them buffalo. What makes you so sure? <laughs> He's a hunter, ain't he? Uh -huh. Yeah, no, no. <clears throat> uh, Rosie's the one girl for me, so fat. She slips off me knee when she hits the floor. It ain't there anymore, cause her rosé's a size... 43. <laughs> it's Barkley. Seems to me I've heard that once or twice before. <laughs> Simon, somehow the goat got up on the roof last night. Would you get her? She needs milking. 
Why don't you let one of them squaws go get a dime? I, I ain't too partial to go. I told you I don't want them to go outside. Those men might be watching. All right, all right. I'll see to it as soon as I finish shaving. Hey, Nana. Hey, Nana, Nana. Ha, ha. I can hear and smell you. I can't see you. Hey, Nana. Oh, there you are. Huh? How in the name of John Nation did you get up there? Oh, you. Oh, what do you think you are, anyway? Mountain goat or something? You got no business being up there. On the roof? Come on, you come on down here with Uncle Simon. Yes. Now, don't you be a ninny, nanny. <laughs> You're comical, huh? Come on along now, Uncle Simon, you hear me? Get your nice, fresh tin cap on. Oh, oh, man! I ain't getting back! Oh, this is the... the end! I can, the goat should be bounded at somebody's fireplace! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Pretty in the morning. Uh, Simon? Uh -huh. Theotaki says you fell off the roof. Honorary Billy got to try to butt me up. Barkley! I ain't got any pants on. Well, are you all right? Well, I, I could have killed myself if I fell in a cactus bush and them needles, you know, they could poison you to death. Well, did you get all the needles out? Yes, I think so. Well, let me see. Miss Barkley, please. Ain't you got no shame at all? <laughs> You just about seen me handle this boy in your pasture, cousin. No time. Just about no time at all. See how much you What up? What's around here? Well, them kind of apples. Jackie Chiefs, attacker? Oh, they haven't even arrived yet. You're drunk, that's all. No, no, I am not drunk at uh, all. What would you call it? Well, I may talk. Ow! Ooh! Be careful, will you? I'd like to split my head clean open. That might... At the moment, yes. A well, man's got a right to have a few couple of little drinks if he wants. No, you haven't. Not while those girls' lives are in danger. In danger? Ah, we've been falling up here all night. We haven't even seen a little bitty goddess snake. Them squaws, them's the ones that's dangerous. All right, all right, what'd you expect, huh? Pester me half to death about them Meiji engines, make me lose out on a nice buffalo hunt. Anybody get drunk. Nonsense, you're just using that as an excuse because you want to leave here. You've been doing that all your life. Whenever something comes up you don't want to face, something distasteful, you soak yourself in alcohol. Oh, is that so, huh? Soak myself in alcohol. Well, just let me tell you something. Yeah, and I suppose I was soaked in alcohol last year when you were stumbling around the desert lost, and I had to come and find you because you was too bullheaded to take my advice, huh? But let me tell you, at that time, you was kind of distasteful to me. Well, I suppose even Beelzebub had good qualities. Who? Beelzebub who? The devil. Oh, look, Miss Barkley, now you got no right to cuss me out. Simon, I know you're brave, Simon, and I'm grateful you saved my life, very grateful. But you had no business getting drunk when those girls' lives depended on you. No, the only business I got is to worry about them sneaky Indians and them smelly goats and any other kind of mangy varmints that might come down the, the pike. Well, I tell you, I ain't gonna worry about them because nobody worries about me. That's another one of your excuses. You don't want anybody to worry about you because you don't want to face responsibility. You're too lazy and too stubborn. 
selfish. You don't want to give. All you want to do is take. You haven't changed a bit. Are you quite finished? Well, that's a fine way for you to talk to me. After all I've done to please you. Let me tell you, you pestered me for the last time, Miss Barclay. Yes, you pestered me once too often. Just once too often. Good day to you, Mrs. Victoria Barclay. Fellas, it's going for a little clippity clop. They're coming, hurry. Now remember. Don't make a sound and don't come out, no matter what you hear. Do you understand? But if these men are evil, you will be in danger. It's you they want, not me. Now hurry. What is it? I... It is nothing. Hold it. Hold it right there. What do you want? Just a little water, though, man. You got water when you were here before. Well, water goes quick in this here heat. I wouldn't try that if I were you. Now, you get on your horse and ride out. I said ride out! <laughs> We know them squaws is in there. There ain't no sense in trying to keep us out. You only just get hurt. <laughs> Chihuahua, the senora, she should pretty good. I think she mean business with that gun. Yeah, Hutch. What are we gonna do now? Wait for her to ride out? Oh, shut up. Probably your fault she got wise and locked the place up anyway. Don't try covering your tracks with my boots. Well, you probably said something when you went inside to look around. I want to take them squaws' eyes and go start in roof. Oh, yeah, start in roof! Bueno, start bueno. I can get us no place. Yeah, you're right. Let's ride and shoot and take them right now. Well, now, uh, that, uh, ain't gonna get the mission doors open now, is it? Especially her shooting back at us. Get a better idea? I will have. <laughs> All right. We'll ride on by. Before we're doing the shooting, We'll see if she'll listen to a little reason. That gal ain't gonna listen to no reason. She don't. There'll be plenty of time to kill her.
Rocky, listen to me. They must not hear, do you understand? No matter how bad the pain is, they must not hear. I, I understand. You hear me? mean no harm to you, lady. All we want is them old dirty squaws. You just send them out and we'll be right on our way. I'm not sending anybody out. And you better leave before Simon gets back. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, Simon ain't coming back. And you know it. He's out chasing buffalo and ain't there. You gonna send them out? No, I'm not. And you get out of here. <laughs> Scores, even if you buried them. Gonna tell us where them squaws is? Or do I start carving on this pretty little filly of yours? Oh, no. What was that? Sounds like it's down here. Uh, maybe you did bury him. Open that up. <laughs> you lied, old Hutch, didn't you? Simon, I'm so glad you came back. Oh, well, yeah. I hate to admit it, but you was right about them buffalo. I rode halfway to Canyon Gap. Not a sign of them, but I did see some tracks doubling back. Their tracks. I figured you might need me. I... Where'd that one come from? Oh, this is my daughter, Audra. Hello. Likewise, I'm sure. You got enough trouble with one female, you got to team up, ride double saddle the best of me, huh? Simon, excuse me. There's a baby about to be born. Oh. Well, it was down there, huh? 
A mother of yours. Ain't there nothing she can do? <laughs> She's something. She's really something. And so, dear father, we ask, please, that you help them find some, some peace, some kindness. They really got it coming to them. Oh, uh, yes, and one more thing. Uh, would you make sure that they know how, uh, how awful sorry we all are? Amen. That was very nice, son. Thank you, Miss Barkley. I certainly ain't no match for Father Andre, but I guess it was a halfway decent burial, huh? Yes. We owe much to your brave heart. When this moon ends, you will come to our camp to become blood brother to our chief. My tribe will be honored to have such a brave Yaki warrior. That's a real honor, Mr. Carter. From what I understand, that means they consider you a great hero. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I uh, mind that so much, but uh, I sure never figured I'd wind up being a Yaki. Neither did I, sir. Neither did I. Excuse me. Well, I'll try. Which one is Barkley? Fellow with his back to the stove. Thank you. Cattle prices drop off any more like this, pretty soon we'll have to pay them to take our feet. It'll get better. Before it gets worse. Howdy. Is this chair occupied? We're playing poker, mister. I'd hope so. For money. It's the only way to play. Uh, is that you smelling like that? Eau de Cologne. Makes a good bracer. I reckon it does. You're making my eyes water, mister. Freeman. Josiah Freeman. Oh, this is uh, Carl Wheeler. Dan Kelsey. And I'm... I know who you are, sir. I'd venture to say that so do most in Northern California. Oh, really? Cards. Oh, uh, three, please. Two. Same. My bet. Some hand you got there, Mr. Freeman. I'm afraid so. I'll just uh, call your $20 raise. Can you beat a pair of eights? That all? I'm afraid so. 
Boss. You win. Well, I owe you twenty dollars. You uh play poker often, Mr. Freeman? Oh, all the time. All the time. Still got a ranch, huh? If you'll just uh, countersign these both copies, Mr. Barkley, I'll be on my way. What's this? Well, it's it's a note of transfer. Unfortunately, I'm out of currency and I'm forced to sign over 20 head of prime JF stock to you. Well, all right. But uh, first thing tomorrow morning, you better deliver that 20 head of prime JF stock or you're going to be known as the late Josiah Freeman. Don't worry. You, you take... Nick Barkley? Mm-hmm. You're Jared Barkley. No, no, Nick. Jared's my brother, you know? Not as well as I thought. Are you anything like your brother? <laughs> Different as night and day. Now, Jared, he'd even try to reason with a fence post. But Nick here, he'd sooner bust it in two. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. What's that? Um, proverbs. Try to be more like your brother. Straight. Audrey, you look lovely. Thank Isn't that just you. a trifle uh, formal for breakfast? <laughs> Carl's taking me to a dance tomorrow night. If he's in any condition to dance after you kept him out all last night playing poker. <laughs> that sounds like. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> With those, you're not. But you signed a note of transfer. Remember? I signed for cattle. They were not cattle. What are they doing here, Nick? What do they look like? Where'd they come from? Well, how do I know where they come from? I'm sorry, there's been a slight misunderstanding. Look, I didn't know what I was signing for. You said JF stock. JF stock. Well, they are JF stock. They are not stock. They're sheep. <coughs> and they stink. <coughs> no wonder you came into that saloon smelling like a flower patch in the middle of July. Well, it's been pleasant visiting with you. Yeah, give me that. Jared. Come here. What can I do for you, Nick? This isn't legal, is it? Is that your signature? You know it's my signature. Well, then I'm afraid it's legal. But I don't want them. You've got them. If there's anything I can do... Well, I think the best thing you can do is just be on your way. One thing I can't stand more than sheep, it's a sheep herder. <laughs> They'll grow on you. So you're the only one he couldn't bluff out of that poker game. Is that right, Nick? Well, the last time I played poker with a man that carries a purse. 
Well, just what do you plan to do with these poor little critters? Drive them to the slaughter. That's what I plan to do. Well, you know we're right in the middle of a little thing called a roundup? Well, tomorrow morning, I'm going to take two men off of that little thing and put them on this little thing. And until tomorrow? I think they're hungry. They're not eating on my range. Well, I hope you get them to slaughter before they starve to death. Come on, give me a hand. Uh-uh. I got cattle to tend to. Well, don't look at me. I have very urgent business to take care of. I'd better fix my hem. <laughs> Did I just ride through a mirage, or are you those... You saw just what you thought you saw. And it's taken me all morning to round these mangy things up. What are you doing, Nick? Branching out? Come on, get out. That perfumed character we played poker with last night paid me off in sheep. Some people might not understand, Nick. They might say the Barclays are hedging their bet. Cattle prices drop off, the first thing they do is jump feet first into the sheep. Oh, no, 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 not a chance. Well, I know that, Nick. Some people might point out that when you came to this valley, you were cattle. You went into mining, then vineyards, and sugar beets, and now, uh... I don't know. The people that know me know I hate sheep just as much as they do. Then get rid of them. Tomorrow morning, when the sun comes over that rise there, the minute the sun comes over that rise, those sheep are heading for the slaughterhouse. Good. Because all they need is a foothold. Who's they? Sheep herders. You hang on to these sheep, and every sneaking sheep herder within walking distance will be swarming all over this valley. And you know what happens when sheep move into a place. I know, I know. It's not fit for cattle or anything else. They chew the grass right down to the roots. The cattle starve, and so do the people who own them. You might say all of us have a stake in what you do. How many ways do I have to say it? They're leaving tomorrow morning. Just so you know. The longer they're around, the more people aren't going to believe you mean what you say. Well, too bad you'll have to miss the dance tomorrow night. But you can tell me how those sheep like the butcher's axe when you get back. <laughs> Thank you. You're late, Heath. Yeah, there are 500 head of cattle scattered all over our range. What happened? Well, his sheep wandered down into the draw and spooked our herd. They are not my sheep. Well, whosever sheep they are, they just cost us three days' work. Well, I can't watch those useless animals day and night. We can find somebody that can. Nick. Why? From what I hear, a good sheepdog can handle a flock ten times the size of yours. Without so much as raising a sweat. Which is more than we can say for you, Nick. <laughs> well, now, you all tell me, in the middle of cattle country, where am I going to find a sheepdog? Try the same fellow you got sheep from. No! Nick, do you want those sheep around here till the end of the roundup? Ten or twelve more days? <laughs> He'd probably want me to play poker for the dog, and I'd wind up with his whole blasted herd of sheep. All right, Nick, what's your alternative? Want some more, please? We're waiting, Nick. I'll see him first thing in the morning. Audra, how come we've never had stew like this before? We've never had lamb before. Thank you. 
hello there. Now, uh, now, don't don't be afraid. I, I'm uh, looking for uh, Mr. Freeman. Freeman. Um, I'm Nick Bartlett. Darn. Darn. Oh, Mr. Barkley, what a pleasant surprise. You win, Uncle Josiah. Here's the dime. Uh, this is my niece, Gail. I want to buy your dog. Oh, sorry if you had come a little sooner. I had two dogs less than a month ago. Well, I didn't have any sheep a month ago. I'll give you $20. Well, what would happen to my flock? Well, I tried. That's about the best a man can do. But I have a suggestion. What? Your sheep were part of mine just a day ago. My dog would have no trouble taking care of them. You mean combine your flock with my sheep? I need help. All I ask is a place to sleep and a reasonable amount of food for Gail and myself. You want to bring your flock over to my range? No, well, you have better grass. Boy, now and wait. And it would be much safer. Fifty dollars, that's my final offer. to see you so soon. Why not? Well, I figured you'd still be driving those sheep this slaughter. I got thirsty. Whiskey, come on, come on. Look, they'll... They'll break up my place. They'll put me out of business. I... I just can't serve a... a sheep man. Not in this town. Now, you call me that one more time, and I'll tear this place up. Ah! <laughs> hey, Kelsey, why don't you ask that sheep man to move downwind a little bit? Sheep man, you're making my friend here sick. Guess I'm lucky. I got a cold. Now, when I get back here, I want to see a bottle and a glass waiting for me. All right? Now, are you the gentleman with the cold? Yeah, well, it don't help much when you get this close. <laughs> well, now, maybe I can fix that. Uh, Carl. Oh, come on, fellas. Your turn, Carl. No, not me, Nick. Well, I guess it's mine. gonna happen? You may pour my drink. Yes, sir. Huh? 
How do you feel, Mr. Barkley? Well, I'll let you know, as soon as I find out who's standing on my face. Well, we did the best we could. Thank you. The gale, run outside and empty the water. She doesn't smile too much, does she? Oh, well, she hasn't found too much to smile about. Well, five will get you ten. My sister will have her giggling as soon as she walks through our front door. What? Well, that is, if your offer still holds, my range for your sheepdog. After what those men did to you? Well, now, that was a little misunderstanding, is all. Can I come back yet? Just as soon as your uncle says yes. Well? Gail, we're going to stay with Mr. Barkley for a while. Here's the dime, Uncle Josiah. Say, is this a private game, or can anyone get in? I think we better start packing. Would you help me with the trunk? All right, sure. Uh, fix up your things, get them together, Gail. Right over here, mister. Keep making it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, that's your peddler's wagon outside? <laughs> Part of my check had passed. How'd you ever find time for the sheep business? Well, I'm, I'm a peddler by trade, a sheep herder by misfortune. Oh, someone paid you off with them, huh? Well, the misfortune belonged to Gail's parents. They were under the mistaken belief that open range meant just that. So they settled here with their sheep. Well, this is cattle country, you know. Uh, took the cattlemen some months to convince them of that. Mr. Barbie? The day that I stopped here with my wagon to get some water, that barn was burning. Gail's parents, her mother and father, most of the sheep were dead. I heard her crying. Mama made me hide in the cellar when they came. Don't forget your doll. The whole thing was so cruel, so senseless. But you stayed. Of course I stayed. She had no relatives. I was tired of wearing out the seat of my trousers selling pots and pans. I love her, Mr. Barkley. I love her like, like she was my own. And in a way, she is now. Well, now. You better get going. I want to get into town before dark. Why are we going to town? Because we're going to drive our sheep right through the middle of it. Nick, did you have to drive those sheep right down the middle of the street? Yes. Why? It's against the law to drive them down the sidewalk. Now, Nick, I want you to I listen to me. I wanted everybody to know. That you're in the sheep business. Ah, now you've got it. All right, Nick, you've got pride. Now, that's just fine. But you're about to take on this entire valley. Do you think you're big enough? Might be interesting to find out. Nick, you've seen a range war before. They start just about like this. One fella does one fool thing, like driving sheep into cattle country, and another fella does something a little more foolish, like shooting him. And before you know it, you've got a full-size range war on your hands. That a fact. That's a war nobody wins, Nick. Everybody loses. Not only men, women, and children, but entire herds. And it never ends. Those sheep are on our land, Jared, our land. And none of them Jaspers in town are going to tell me what I can or can't do. Those sheep aren't spooking anybody else's cattle. And they're not chewing up anybody else's range. And there's no reason for anybody's feelings to be hurt. Did that argument convince Carl Wheeler, or did you have to sell him some other way? What Carl Wheeler thinks doesn't matter. I'm afraid it does, Nick. Because the entire valley is behind him. All right. All right, I'll, I'll talk to Carl Wheeler as soon as he brings Audra home tonight. Maybe I can talk some sense into him. All right? Mrs. Barkley. Yes, Mr. Freeman. I was just on my way to the herd, and I... Oh, wouldn't you like a glass of sherry? Thank you very much. Yes. Gail isn't getting in the way, is she? Oh, no. She's upstairs helping Audra get dressed. I appreciate you taking her into the house. 
since her parents died, I'm the only one she's had. I know I'm not the ideal person to talk to her about dresses and things that girls want to talk about. I think you've done very well. Mrs. Barclay, may I ask you a question? Yes. That fight that Mr. Barclay had, those men were his friends, weren't they? Yes. Well, why would his friends want to attack him? He's one of them. Not anymore. Was it because of the sheep? Mm-hmm. Well, when I first chose, I mean, I mean, when I first thought... What did you think, Mr. Freeman? <laughs> the Barclays are so big, so powerful, surely no one would dare attack them, even if they did bring a few sheep into the valley. How long have you lived in the West? Ten years. Well, that should have been time enough. For what? For you to learn that there's no one so big, so powerful, that he can change the hates and prejudices of a lifetime. At least not without a fight. Your son is a very stubborn man. Yes, very. He won't give way. When Nick is pushed, he pushes back with everything he has. No matter what the cost? Well, sometimes it costs more to walk away from a fight than to finish it. But he cares nothing for those animals. He's a cattleman, Mr. Freeman. But he's also a man. Now, what do you suppose would happen if tomorrow people decided that we shouldn't mine gold or grow beef? Do you think his friends would understand that? No, I don't. I think we all crossed the line today. And none of us can turn back. That was fun, Carl. Even after I tromped all over your feet? With a little practice, you could be a very good dancer. Well, now, if I had somebody as pretty as you to practice with, I wouldn't mind learning. Carl. Hmm? That fight with Nick. That wasn't me. No, but you could have stopped it. Would have taken a stack of dynamite to pry them apart, and I didn't have any with me. Still... Love me? I haven't decided yet. But what about Nick? What? Do you love him? <laughs> That's a silly question. Audra, I wouldn't have asked it if I thought that. If you love him, then you can help him. How? Talk to him. Make him see that his friends are more important than trying to prove some point that, that ain't even worth proving. You mean persuade him to give up his sheep? He'd listen to you. I doubt that. It's worth a try. No, it isn't. Nick's his own man. And I don't like being used. Especially by you. Audra. As long as Nick has those sheep, there can't be any future for us. Then I'll just have to take that loss. Send a search party out for you. I needed some air. Though it didn't do much good. You usually come in when you bring Audra home. Not tonight. I've uh, been wanting to talk to you. There's nothing to talk about, Nate. You're just going to pretend those sheep aren't there, huh? Look, the rest of us had a meeting today. We came up with a solution to your problem. Is that a fact? Just so everybody knows which side you're on, you slaughter those vermin right where they stand. No. I figured you'd say that. So we took it out of your hands. We? This is my valley too, Nick. My family sweated and bled for it just like yours. And I'm not gonna stand by and see it trampled to death by those sheep. Friend or no friend. You touch just one of them sheep, Carl. And you're gonna find me on your doorstep. I'm not going anywhere, Nick. And neither are you.
short of killing. Better now, Uncle Josiah? Yes. <clears throat> I didn't gonna buy me a new dress, but I don't know which one to pick. This one, or this one. Maybe even this one. They're all very nice. Gail, do you ever think what it would be like to live with a real mother and father. You like it here, don't you? Audra's nice, and she smells pretty, too. Well, you may have to stay here for a while. I've got something very, very important to do, and it might take a long time. And I have to do this without you. Don't you want to be my uncle anymore? I'll always be your uncle. I'll always press you to brush your teeth and clean your plate. Because I love you. No. You be a good girl and you stay here with the Barclays till I get back. You're never coming back. Of course I am. I promise. No, you're not. That's just what you were saying. I was just talking. No, you. You go inside. I love you, Uncle Josiah. What's the matter? I did this. I'm to blame. What are you talking about? You didn't win those sheep in that poker game. I lost them. Full house still beats a pair of eights. Yeah, but I had four eights. That's why I didn't show my hand when you called it. I won that pot. Well, I don't get that. Well, it was part of my whole plan. A plan born out of desperation but no less a trick. 
I read about Jared Barkley defending a sheep herder in Fresno County. And that's when I got the idea. I figured if I could get your brother Jared into the sheep business, I'd have a partner no one could intimidate. So you got stuck with me. That proved a good choice, Mr. Barkley. Too good. Even getting you to protect Gail and my herd, that even worked. I was so clever, so smart. I brought all this on you. No, no, yes, no, sir. no. You didn't bring it on. I brought it on by keeping him, and Carl Wheeler brought it on by killing him. If you're lucky, you'll kill him. If you're not lucky, he'll kill you. In one way or the other, somebody gets hurt. Well, he dealt the hand. But you don't have to play the hand. You don't have to play it. He won't let me keep him. He won't even let me move him. Let me move him. Oh, no, no. Let that, me move them. No, no, that's exactly what they're waiting for. Besides, you wouldn't last five minutes on that trail. They're my sheep, and I want not the ones I want. You go on back to the house. I know how to handle these people. You're not going to drive those sheep by yourself. I can and I will. Furthermore, if I ever find you on my range again, I just might have you arrested for trespassing. God forgive me. And you too, Mr. Barkley. Looks like Josiah had a better argument than we did. Come on up, Nick. Come on. Here, take a swig of this. Uh. Is Josiah? I don't know, but the sheep are gone. Oh, I finally met a man as stubborn and as stupid as I am. Here, come on. Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? I know, I know. The law should take care of this. Well, maybe the law can take care of Josiah's burying. Now, listen, you keep talking like that, and we won't even offer to come with you. One fool's enough in any family. Come on, get. We gonna listen to him? Does he listen to us? Let's go. That's far enough, Freeman. Where's your sheep-loving friend? I'm going through. All we want are those sheep. You get in the way, we'll take you, too. All right, let's get it done. Sheep. Still do. But you were right, they grow on you. I didn't want this, Nick! Then back off! Odds like this can kill you, Carl. Throw them down, boys.
This one's yours, Jerry. Tomorrow will be yours. We'd only be fighting ourselves, Carl. Tearing down everything we built. Tell it to your brother. He already knows it. Now, what's it going to take to convince you? Not that you'd care anymore. But cattle prices will be climbing again. Pretty soon you won't be able to see the grass for the bees on this trip. Carl, then where will your sheep be? Carl, the people in this valley have been living in their cocoon too long. We've all grown rich and fat and smug, thinking our way was the only way. Well, now that cocoon's been ripped open, whether we like it or not. We've got millions of acres here. Room enough for both cattle and sheep. Thanks very much for helping us pack. Well, now, just because you sold off your sheep's no reason you have to leave so soon, you know. Well, we've taken advantage of it long enough. Mr. Barker, you're a very fine man, and I'm very pleased to have known you. Well, now, you're not so bad yourself for a sheep herder. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Barker. Goodbye, dear. If we met that wise man, we could tell him a thing or two about living underwater, couldn't we? Well, I think it was worth it. Somehow it always is. <laughs> <laughs> 